I want to tell you about the heat equation, which is the following second order differential equation in two variables, so it's a partial differential equation, which describes the evolution in time, t, uh, of a temperature distribution, phi. And the temperature distribution is a temperature distribution on a rod, a one-dimensional rod, uh, where the coordinate on the rod is x. So phi is a function of x on the rod and t, which is time. And we think of it as temperature distribution. So that's why it's called a heat equation. It tells us how phi changes in time. So the way I want to present to you the solution of this equation is to give you various special solutions um, and then superimpose them to get a more general solution. So, for example, you could take as your first solution uh, something like phi of xt equals sine of x times e to the minus t. And why is this a sensible thing to take? Well, if you, if you differentiate this twice with respect to x, you're going to pick up a minus sign because you, you're differentiating sine twice, so you get minus phi. And if you differentiate it once with respect to t, you're going to pick up a minus sign from the e to the minus t, so you're going to get minus phi. So these two are equal, and this is a solution to the heat equation. And when t equals 0, this factor of e to the minus t is just 1. So um, we get phi of x comma 0 equals sine x. So this means if we were to start off with a temperature distribution on the rod, so here's our rod, our temperature distribution looks like sine of x. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming here the rod goes from 0 to pi, so sine of x will, the graph of sine of x will look like this. So this is at t equals 0. What will happen as t gets larger is that this will be exponentially uh, damped, or it will decay exponentially. So this is for t bigger than zero, the solution is going to get smaller and smaller, starting off from its original thing, which was t equals zero. OK, so this is how sine x, an initial distribution of sine x, evolves in time. So this is the initial temperature distribution. It decays like e to the minus t. So our second example is going to be what happens to sine of 2x. Well, when we differentiate this twice with respect to x, we're going to get a minus 4 multiplying everything. And if we want to compensate for that by differentiating with respect to t once, we're going to need an e to the minus 4 t. So you can check d2 this by dx squared equals minus 4 phi. And that's the same as d5 by dt. So, if our, so this means if our initial temperature distribution looks like this, this is supposed to be sine 2x. It's not a very good drawing, but that's what it's supposed to be. Then um, over time, it will again decay, and get smaller and smaller, like e to the minus 4t. So it'll, it'll go faster. It'll go faster than sine x. It'll vanish faster than sine x. So in general, so example 3 is going to be for sine nx, we're going to need a factor of e to the minus n squared t in our solution. Uh, so this is how the initial distribution sine nx changes. So the graph of this will be some wiggly thing. It's supposed to look a bit more uniform than that, but... Let me actually draw that again. It's really bad. So, okay, that's when n is 4. 
to get this. Um, and this will decay like e to the minus n squared t, in our case, minus 16 t. Okay, so now we know how sine nx evolves in time. We also know how any linear combination which converges suitably uniformly of sine nx will evolve. Because if we have a solution and we add it to another solution, we get a solution by linearity of the heat equation. It's a linear differential equation. So if this is the initial condition we want, then the time evolution is just going to be the sum of the evolutions of each of these simple solutions. So in other words, if phi of x comma 0 equals this sum of sine and x with coefficients a n, then phi x t, the general solution for this initial condition, is going to be the corresponding sum of sine nx e to the minus n squared t. But what is this? This is a Fourier expansion. So let, let me put a star here. So star is a Fourier expansion. So suppose we're given some really arbitrary initial data f of x. And I'm going to have to require that f of x equals 0 at x equals 0 and pi, because all of the sine functions vanish at 0 and pi. But other than that, it's pretty much arbitrary, you know, maybe differentiable. We require it to be differentiable, so it has a Fourier series, um, or piecewise differentiable. Uh, then if, if we take the Fourier expansion f of x equals sum of a n sine nx, then the, the corresponding evolution of f of x will just be the following a n, sum of a n sine nx e to the minus n squared t. So the nth Fourier mode will decay like e to the minus n squared t. So this is how to solve the heat equation where the boundary condition, or the initial condition rather, in other words the initial temperature distribution on the rod is f of x, where f of x vanishes at 0 and pi, and we're furthermore requiring the boundary conditions on the rod that the temperature is kept constant equal to 0 at uh, x equals 0 and x equals pi, because that's what happens for all of these sine solutions. So this is quite a special case but I mean it's interesting and we can we can see some physical attributes of this solution namely remember heat travels down a gradient a temperature gradient that is and that explains why our higher Fourier modes decay faster than our lower Fourier modes because our higher Fourier modes are really, really wiggly. So they've got a lot of gradient, so the heat travels very fast and spreads itself out very fast. Whereas if our heat, if our temperature distribution starts off looking like that, it takes longer for the heat to, to even out. So why did I pick the function sine of nx to look at? Well, this comes about by a trick called separation of variables, which I'll explain now. So, y sine. So, what's special about all of these solutions I found up here, this one, this one, and this one, is that there are the form capital X times capital T, some function of X times some function of T, some function of X, some function of T. So I, I'm just going to look for solutions like that. These are called separated solutions.
So x is a function depending only on little x, and t is a function depending only on little t. And then the equation, which is d phi by dt equals d2 phi by dx squared, becomes x t prime. This is the derivative of t with respect to little t. That's because this partial derivative ignores the x completely and only hits the t because it's uh, we're keeping x fixed when we take a partial derivative with respect to t. And the other side becomes x prime prime t. So if we divide by xt, then we get x prime prime over x equals t prime over t. And this side depends only on little x. This side depends only on little t, which means that this is a constant. Because this side has no t dependence, this side has no x dependence. So the whole thing has neither kind of dependence. So this means x prime prime equals lambda x and t prime equals lambda t. Um, so this is the harmonic motion equation for x. And remember, I was interested, just for simplicity in this case, in solutions uh, with, with the boundary condition um, phi of 0 comma t equals 0 and phi of pi comma t equals 0. In other words, we're keeping the temperature equal to 0 here and here. And with these boundary conditions, that means that x is going to have to be sinusoidal because x, I mean, it could either be a sum of shine and cosh, but that can never vanish in two places, or it could be linear if lambda was equal to 0, but that can never vanish in two places. So it's going to have to be a sine plus a cos, um, and actually with some coefficients, and the cos is not going to contribute because it cannot vanish at zero. So there's no cos involved. So x is just a sine, sine of x root minus lambda. So this is where lambda is negative. So this is why we were interested in sine. And this, this second condition means that sine of pi times root minus lambda equals zero, which means root minus lambda is an integer. So this is why we were interested in looking at initial conditions of the form sine nx. Okay, so that's the heat equation.